Hey everybody, it's Conscious Medium Brandon Ross and I'm coming to you today to talk about what everybody is talking about with the Will Smith Oscar debacle boxing match bout whatever the hell it is that you want to see it and I'm going to pick apart the stars for Jada for Will and then Chris Rock and figure out how they all intersected for Will to walk up on stage and go BAM! Welcome to Earth! <laughs> All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me here. I'm going to be switching back and forth. I want to talk about, of course, Empath Rising. This beautiful shirt, isn't this good looking? Isn't this fantastic? Empath Rising. You can get all sorts of shirts, men's, women's, cotton, mixtures, poly, I don't care. I don't know, whatever you're into. You get sweatshirts, mugs, cups, bags, whatever. And we're supporting the Ukrainian refugees through the Be Strong Foundation. They're up against the borders all on Poland. They're moving into other countries right now as well. But they're managing over 2 million refugees right now. Every little bit can support it. And that's our cry to help those and others in need. 20% of our profits actually go directly to the Be Strong Foundation. And we're very grateful to be a part of anything with that. I also want to talk about our actual true sponsor for this um, for this class or for this uh, video, the astrology class, the complete astrology class. Uh, this is a class where over six weeks over Zoom, we actually talk about all the different aspects. So if you like what I'm talking about here and you want a deeper knowledge base of it, I'm joined with my good friend, Beth Sagnali, as she tackles the moon, its cycles, and its impact on natal charts and how we can uh, do things like manifest with the moon, that sort of thing. It's a really cool A to Z class. There's a lot that goes into it. And this week, probably pretty much by the time you've seen this, is probably the last time in which you can get the 333 discount. If not, we got to go up in price, guys. It's the way the world works. It's the way we are. That's why you do an early bird special. And then you got to jump in. All right, guys. Today, we're going to actually talk about a really in-depth conversation. We all saw it. We all saw what we saw. The opinions have run rampant. Chris shouldn't have said it. Will shouldn't have acted that way. Jada was like, what the hell? What I'm about to show you is a compelling take on the different aspects and how astrology actually played a part. By the end of this video, you will see the compelling journey of one woman's healing, another man's conflict within that healing, and another person just doing what he does every day. That combination took center stage in L.A., on March 27th, 2022. Now, before we get into this, I want to tell you, you have every right to have your opinion. You want to comment and like on the things below. The things I'm going to respond to are the things that are about astrology when it comes to this. Maybe it's a behavior that you can pull from it. Maybe it's an idea that maybe there's a tendency connected to it. But I'm just going to say it like this. Please be civil. These are human beings going through something. And I, in no way, shape, or form, are trying to lead you down the path of telling you and postulating the idea that I have all the answers based on this. We don't know what happens between Jada and Will. Sure, we talk about them being in open marriage. They've talked about things freely. But do we really know? Do we really understand the fact that Chris Rock has been knocked down so many times in his career, and yet he keeps getting up? He does it with his tremendous friends, and you'll see it because he's Aquarian. You also recognize that Jada, and again, whatever she's going through, the the Appalachia, Appalachia, I, I, I'm alopecia. I'll get it right. I want to respect that. The alopecia is something that's a byproduct to that. I have some commentary in that. But again, don't take my commentary like I'm trying to lecture anybody on any one particular thing except for this. We have to start accepting people as humans. We have to start accepting people that they're in process. And when we are purviewed to it, we should be honored and get off our judging high horse. It was really tough to do research on this because so many people was just about opinions. I wanted to kind of get to know Jada Pinkett. I really didn't know her. I've seen clips of her show and boy, is she opinionated about who she is. 
But you know what? She speaks like somebody that's in pain. I think all that pain actually came to a head. Now, I'm going to do a quick edit out of this. We're going to dive right into the chart here. I screwed up the audio a little bit when I got started. I'm still new around here. Today is technically only my 12th day. All right, guys. Let's stay tuned and let's get moving here. Go ahead and get some of our scene action going here. Um, so Chris comes up. He's talking about it. And then he just slides that joke in. Now, there's reference back to about uh, five years ago, six years ago, seven years ago now, where this Fresh Prince got all sorts of ticked off. And he was all sorts of ticked off. But it was kind of in poor taste, but it's kind of what he's meant to do. Welcome to Earth! Come on, that's funny. But Chris acted like a consummate professional, like he was meant to be there. And just moments later, he wins an Oscar to a standing ovation of a room full of colleagues. Jada Pinkett suffers from al alpatia which is a disease that causes you to lose your hair. So, of course, he's sensitive to it. Will's had an illustrious career, and over the years, he's been known as a nice guy, but his personal life, well, that's kind of gotten on some people. Him and Jane are known polygamists. They are swingers, for lack of better terms. And let's not judge here. Let's be adults for 30 seconds. But the two of them have built a relationship over the years that love them or hate them. They are together and known as a power couple in Hollywood, right? So let's just enjoy and embrace this from the beginning. By the way, I do want to put this right here one more time, okay? Chris's upcoming special is going to be called Ego Death. Just want to plant that seed right here, right now. Ego Death. Let's go to the chart. Gosh, where am I going? So first of all, let's take a look at Will and Jada together, right? And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and pull up both of them at the same time. I'm going to get myself somewhere in the middle. Caught between two lovers, living like a fool. I want to do a little bit of a comparison here, and I want to go a little bit quicker than what I've done on most natal charts and just jump right into the aspects of the relationship, right? So listen, you have Jada on the left, Will on the right. You've got her son on his Uranus. Now, we're going to actually talk about some other comparisons that go right across the board here. But I just want to point out a couple of things within the relationship before I pick apart their individual stuff. So Jada is a Virgo. Will is a Libra. Now, typically... Virgos and Libras, when you're right next to door to each other astrologically, the astrological signs are actually designed to really incorporate and salt and pepper the earth with a variety of everybody. So just to kind of keep track of it, sometimes when you're right next door, you're not always best friends. It's just the way it is, right? So your differences come out a little bit more. Your likes might come out a little bit more. But a couple of things that jump right out at this is 100% that Jada has really fed into him his dreams, him breaking cycles, and him finding his power base. You can see that in his sun influence in Uranus and also into Pluto, also into Neptune. So she has completely enabled him from a career standpoint. Over 20 years. This is where his success really kind of took off. This is right off the, the, you know, the ID4 and all that other stuff. Now Mercury square into Lilith this talks about healing. So she's really kind of been influential for him to understand what his role is with women. This is a thing, everybody. This is a thing. And Jada as a personality is very tough on him. Well, let's be honest. She's kind of tough on everybody, right? If you've seen her show, you know that she has no problem talking about her black female pride. And again, I'm not being racial here at all. I'm just telling you what she talks about. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. But understanding that those are the influences into him is incredibly important, right? So you also have this Venus conjunction with Uranus. You also have this Mars conjunct with his 10th house. Let's talk about this for a second. So Jada comes in with a set of tools. Will comes in with a set of tools. This Mars conjunct with his 10th house 
it could be very easily said that Jada is responsible for his fame, at least where he is today. Just going to put that out there, based on that right there. Now, I also want to talk about further down into the chart. You've got the dynamic here about how Jupiter is square to Mars. She knows how to press his buttons, everybody. That is a very important part of this case. I feel like I'm presenting unlike Law and Order. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways, I want to make sure I'm fully in the screen here. So you've got Jupiter square to Mars. You've also got the stability she brings, right? His first house being in uh, Gemini, I believe. She's kind of like pick a lane here a little bit, right? But then here comes some opposition. Uranus, the rebellion to the North Node. In other words, he's got to kind of toe the line for him to fulfill his karmatic duties. And yes, it's karmatic. Trademark pending. You've also got her Pluto, the power base coming into his son. So like I said, there's a lot here about fueling her, him, right? Now the sun sextile to uh, the ascending for her means that he's going to bring out the best in her in a lot of different ways. When I start breaking down this chart into the triad, I just want to point out just a few of these things here. Tenth house conjunct into Pluto. Well, his power base is helping her career. So these guys in the Jupiter conjunct into the tenth house. They're doing one of these. I got your back. You got mine. I got secrets. You got secrets, right? Now, let's take a look at Will and Chris. I don't know how much is going to get on the screen here, but here we go. So, Will and Chris look really interesting to me. A couple of things I want to point out, and we're going to talk about Chiron today. We're going to talk about um, North Node. Lilith makes an appearance. Tenth house is a big deal, right? But the twelfth house is the house of the undoing. And I want to draw everybody's attention right here into the twelfth house, right? The twelfth house is static. Everybody's got one. This is what's going on in yours. Right? Well, in the 10th house, you have Will's structure coming under fire while Chris's rising sign is in the 12th house. So Chris, as fiery as he can be and say, I'm going to get up there and I'm going to make everybody laugh. This might not have been the day to do it, buddy. By the way, his moon is also up there too. We're going to talk a little bit about that when we do the comparison chart. I think you guys are going to like where I'm going. Let me get some of this, this, this maniacal stuff out of the way. Right? Will's moon is also sitting in the eighth house in Mercury. Guess what, everybody? That's the love potion right there. Mercury, eighth house. You would have looked to guess if this is going to be a good night. This is going to be a night I'm going to be on top. Doesn't matter who it is. It's the way it is. But then you have this, this dissecting piece of this, right? Or look at what's going on in Virgo. By the way, the Virgo in this conversation is Jada Pinkett Smith. You've got power in here. You've got Jupiter, right? You've got communications. You're in the fifth house. This is about your creativity and your passion about what you're creating. So their worlds are literally doing this from a creative standpoint. But when I show you what's going on on this day between Jada and Will, Jada owns him, guys. Jada is going through some serious stuff. All right, a couple of other aspects here between Chris and Will. They actually have a lot in common. They really do. You know, Will being a, a Scorpio moon, being squared to the son of Chris, you know, this kind of tells me that, you know what, we ain't going to be best friends after work. But this son to the trine of Venus is, hey man, I love everybody. But this moon to Jupiter, they could literally be like, yeah, I just don't like the guy. Like, uh, like and by the way, you could, you could just have a vibe about somebody. You can get in the quantum physics of everything and be like, well, it's about a past life. It's about this is how he treated me. He said this about somebody. I heard this. It's just a feeling I get, right? That's where that moon in opposition to Jupiter comes in, right? 
but it's also moon conjunct with Neptune, which tells me there's some dream focused here. And by the way, the Neptune, how you read these, the Neptune is conjunct with his moon, so Chris's Neptune, hopes and dreams, are conjunct with his Scorpio moon. Confidential, sensual, confident lover. So the dream part of this is that there's some karmic value here that Chris is destined to put him in a position where he can show his true stripes. But how he does it, <laughs> holy shit, you saw the footage. Now, Mercury, opposition to Moon. There, there are just these oppositional things here. Listen, Chris and Will are not bowling partners. They are not getting on the links together. They're not saying, hey, we just got to get two more and let's go. No, they're not friends. They are not friends. They are not friends. Which, by the way, when we get to the part about what Will has to work on in this life, I want to point that out again. Their Jupiters are trying, which means there could be competition between the two of them. I don't know. Did Chris, did Chris have a date, Jada? Did he just look? And let's not forget his famous joke. Right? Chris's famous joke. They never have a reason to hit a woman. But I understand. Well, guess what, Chris? You just got slapped. <coughs> Two other things I want to point out here. The North Node in Will's chart is square to the 10th house in Chris's chart. Now, what does that mean? So you got the North Node. You've got the karmic value, the thing that you're supposed to do on this life, the thing that you're supposed to work on, right? And then it's square with the 10th house, which is about career, how you project out there, how you get the work done. Transversely, his 10th house, Chris's 10th house, is working on top of the North Node, what he's supposed to do. So opportunity central here. Opportunity central. What did they do with it? Well, you saw the footage. I saw some funny stuff out there. Like Will Smith finally has to go live with his aunt and unky in Bel Air. <laughs> but the North Node and this 10th house is very telling to me. Incredibly telling to me. And if you really, truly want to look at this, they were destined for it. They're at a 2 2 6 2 8 one, one, it's an 11. There's divine timing in their conflict, guys. They were destined. It was angelically driven. Oh, and it was coaxed by Jada. But hang on a second. I am yeah, myself. You got some other aspects here about the squares, about how it kind of holds it back. So power base on one side, north node on the other, prone for mistakes, prone for public shaming, that sort of thing. Listen, they, they don't have to be best Here. All right, we're going to get back to the show here. Now, I want to take a look at um, Jada, Chris, and Will together. This is incredibly important. And I'm not going to make this video too, too long because I think, I think there's fatigue already on this topic and subject. But I would be remiss if I didn't put in my two cents because my two cents added up becomes a whole dollar. All right. So I've taken just a few aspects to really highlight where I'm going with this. So I want to point out that Jada is a Virgo Virgo. She's a double Virgo. And by the way, most people will be called a double something if they have two of their triad. So it could be sun, moon. It could be sun rising. It could be moon rising, right? But how it's said is a little bit different. And we're going to get to that with Chris. So she's just, just stick with the left-hand column here. So let's stick with the left-hand column. You don't need to see me, right? So if it's in the shot. I think it is. So with this, actually, I'm going to reverse this. You're all going to love me later for this one. Okay, I'll go like that, and then I'll go like this. Fair enough? Okay. Now, 
Jada is sitting here with a Virgo Virgo Sag, so she's a double Virgo. <clears throat> I also want to kind of point out here that in that, listen, the Virgo son, she's she's a bit of a perfectionist. Um, you know, it speaks to her being impeccably, you know, dressed. I mean, she's always on point. She is runway ready, right? She's got it together. Her Virgo moon, you know, when we talk about things like Virgo moons, and we talk about the moons and the moon energy to it, um, for her, this is kind of her Achilles heel because she may have it all together in a lot of other places, but there's an emotional piece to this, right? She really, like, I mean, listen, she can be the best mom, love, whatever, but if she is not really feeling it, she's incredibly vulnerable. That's a thing. That is a thing for Jada Pinkin. And we need to recognize that as we go along, right? So then her Sagittarius, this rising sign, she's incredibly optimistic. So don't forget that part of it. But the rose-colored glasses can bite you in the ass. In other words, you can overplay your hand if you're really kind of working something, right? Now I want to take a look at Will really quick. Now Will is actually the most balanced of the three of them. But I'm going to show you how he gets thrown off balance really, really quick. So he's a Libra in Sun. His Scorpio is in Moon. And listen, just to pick apart the, the Scorpio Moon here, you know, there's a lot of sexuality into that, right? He really looks at fantasy over reality at times, right? And then he could become bitter and angry and kind of a little possessive. So just recognize that that is a trigger for him. This emotional thing is very much like it's kind of like if I wanted to, I could have just talked about the moon in the 10th house and Chiron. But I think it's interesting to take a look at all of this. So then you have the ascending sign in Gemini. Well, that just makes him a little bit wishy-washy, but he's got all this air up here in the rest of his chart. <laughs> And by the way, all three of them make appearances in one another charts. It's fan freaking fantastic. That's all I'm going to say. So the Gemini, so the Gemini part of this is about him is going to come into play into some, into Chris's North Node, if you can see it already. Now let's talk about Chris. He's a double Aries, but he's an Aquarian double Aries. What that means is he's an Aquarius, and then he goes Aries, Moon, Aries, Rising. Well, the Aries, Moon, again, remember how we're, we're kind of sitting right in there. Aries are known for being, you know what? They're they're compassionate. They're 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 strong. They're they're, they're there's like a a faithfulness to them. They're really driven to make sure that things are in a good place. Um, but they also might have a short temper. And they also might have a total disregard for where things are going. And as an Aries rising and moon, Chris Rock going to be what Chris Rock does. He's a comedian. He's not going to necessarily take into consideration that you might be offended by what he's about to say. And he'll just say, all right, well, is that me or is that you? But I understand. Listen, it's, it's, the irony is not lost on the fact that one of his most popular jokes are about domestic abuse, saying it's not right, and then saying, but I understand. I'm here to tell you that I think Chris is really kind of built to kind of understand. Because let's take a look at the Mer Mercuries, and again, go right across the board here. Virgo, where have we heard that before? Oh, it's Jada's son. Oh, oh, Mercury for Will. It's a Libra. Oh, 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 Will's a Libra. Chris is an Aquarian. He communicates like an Aquarian. Ta-da. I really should black that out, but I don't care. It's good coffee in the middle of the night. But taking a look at the Mercury, so Mercury Virgos, they're going to get it right. They're going to be well-spoken. They're going to be well put together. Will is going to be uplifting to humanity. 
in in the moment with the right person. So he's really good one on one when it comes to communication. Sometimes, be, and by the way, he actually talks about this. He talks about how when he acts, he thinks the only person in the room is the person I got the dialogue with. He talks about stuff like that. And then Aquarius for Mercury for Chris. Huh. They all speak to their sun signs. This this stuff's interesting, guys. I'm sorry. Human behavior unfolded in front of us. And now we're taking a look at it and going, huh, whoa, 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 whoa. What, 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 what is this? Why would we fight or defend this? Right? Now, the Mercury, let's, let's move on to Venus here. So Jada is a Libra and so is Will. Look at all that air energy for Will. Anybody want to ground him? Say Jada. So when two Libra Venuses get together, there's a little codependency, but there's a ton of freedom. By the way, in the first top of this, the Virgo, Virgo, Sagittarius, Jada Pinkett Jr. Jr. <laughs> Maybe she is. I, I don't know. I don't judge. Jada Pinkett Smith does not is not built from her sun to her moon to her rising to her communication as a swinger's wife. I'm just going to give you that right there. However, this Libra in Venus, along with his Libra in Venus, they're really committed to each other. There's a lot of commitment. There's a deep love here. So if Will's like, hey, listen, baby, like, you know, I gotta, you know I'm always going to come home. Oh, okay. That's the only place that he really gets this together, right? So Jada, before we go any further, I just want you to take a deep breath. This is going to get a little unkind. Because you're doing some healing, and sometimes healing is ugly. And I say this with the utmost respect for anybody that goes through anything. It manifests itself in a lot of different ways. Healing comes in many, many... But I'm pretty sure that what I was actually talking about is how we are really meant to use astrology here moving forward. It is not meant to predict things to help you become rich and famous. Although it might have destiny attached to it. We certainly can't use it to judge other people. Because let me tell you something. Deep inside of each one of us, there's something ugly. It's hard. We also recognize that when we go through things, that when it's on a public stage, it's more difficult when the opinions become the definition of what's going on. And you have to go within. My real hope, my true hope, is that Will, no matter what his actions were, were a best intention, even though violence really isn't the answer. Unless, of course, you're Ukraine and you're being invaded by a foreign power. So violence could be the answer. It's also not meant to discourage Chris Rock to be his usual self because he was his, his spotlight. He was actually having a good day. Jada wasn't. And Will definitely wasn't. There's a little bit of ownership there. But instead of looking at it as trying to judge people, instead of looking at it as in, oh gosh, this is right, right and wrong, I think the lesson that we can all take away from this is that there's no absolutes. Even look at the opinions across the board. People saying, oh, yeah, Chris should have been knocked into the next week. Okay. This is our opportunity to start to look at the stars and look at the things that we do as tendencies and recognize how we're supposed to evolve. The age of Pisces still has a strong hold on us. The idea of being codependent on other people in order to get where we need to. All about community. The age of Aquarius is about personal responsibility, and we better start getting that right. Personal responsibility doesn't mean that you can't couple with someone. It means that you have to hold your own weight. Jada is doing incredible amount of healing right now based on the stars. Will feels like a fish out of water. That's what you saw. Chris is just being Chris. It's a horrible impression, I know. But we've got to move across, we've got to move past this because we have to start looking at this from a personal accountability standpoint. 
Because as we move into the age of Aquarius, we're going to be left behind if we don't start to evolve our thinking. And you have a role in that right now. Don't judge Will Smith or Jada Pinkett or Chris Rock. Look at your own actions. Take away the lesson. For me, and I wanted to backload this because I actually want to do another video on this altogether, but I'm going to start to clear my pipes for it now. I had to face something a couple of weeks ago. My son was bullied at school, and in this world, once upon a time when I grew up, bullies were actually the type of thing where bullies would just show up and then you'd be like, ah, you're mean, and you walk away and whatever. Well, there was this kid that was just a tyrant in school. He was always bringing in brass knuckles, and he wouldn't use them, he would just show them, just to let you know he was the bigger cat in the room. And then one day I said, that's it, I've had enough. He was picking on a friend of mine, and I grabbed him and I dragged him down the alleyway next to school, and I got a couple of really good ones in. I mean, really good ones. Well, the next day I had to go to court. Not really court, but it was Sister Maureen, Sister of Mercy Court. And she closed the door behind me. She walked in, sat down, and I sat across her desk. And she looked right at me, and she leaned in with her hands folded, and she said, Brandon, I'm not raising pansies here. But there's a right time and a wrong time to fight. And you chose the wrong time and the wrong place for that fight. And she sat back in her chair with her hands folded and took a deep breath and said, but how did it feel to punch that son of a bitch? I kind of knew everything was going to be okay. She went on to tell me that school property is still school property, and even though I dragged him down the alleyway, it wasn't far enough off of school property, so she had to be involved. She also then commented that she watched him terrorize other people for years, and she was proud that I stood up to him. And taking a swing at him was the only thing that was ever going to make sense to him. And she said, but always use your words first. You're smarter than that. Second of all, you're not the punching type. I think she just told me I punch like a girl. <laughs> And last but not least, he never picked on someone again. Now, I'm not looking for anything here. But what I am here to state is that there sometimes there is a time to do that. Do I think, do I, in my opinion, was that the place to do it for Will Smith? No, he burned his career down. He tried to publicly embarrass somebody else and took that joke way too hard. Could he be offended? Yeah, absolutely. That's not how you deal with that. That's not what grown-ups do. By the way, an 11-year-old kid drags a kid down the alley. Right? But as we evolve, and as I evolved, I began to realize how much power I had and that my words were stronger than anything I could do with my body. Even though I'm a big guy, I'm incredibly well-fed. <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. But long story short is that we are all striving to become better. We're all trying to adhere ourselves to talking it out instead of fighting it out. That's an Aquarian way. To look conflict in the eye, sit it down, and have an intelligent conversation with it. It's really hard. And part of the reason is because we were never taught how. That's part of what you saw with Will Smith. He took his, you know, West Philadelphia, born and raised, and said, that's it, I'm going to go to this. Because he's in fight or flight mode, because his person is in pain. Jada is going through a tremendous amount of healing right now. It sucks for her. And on top of that, to have an ailment, I can empathize. I can empathize. Chris Rock was an innocent party in this, in an odd sort of way. But take the lesson from this. Take the lesson... That there are things at play that you'll never understand, nor should you. We should never really fully be privy to what else it is that's going on for other people. Some people truly just want to get to the bottom of somebody, you know, by, it's called doxing, 
or like you do so much research on them that you know them before you meet them. You've taken the magic out of a relationship. When people come to me as a medium and they want to know about this guy they just met, I'm like, call me in six months. You, I, I shouldn't be able to tell you more about them than me. I'm not going to take away your free will. And by the way, that's what this video was truly all about. Free will. It was the free will of Jada side-eyeing him and having whatever conversation happened beforehand. It's the free will of Will Smith walking up and punching him right in the head, slapping him, whatever. It's the free will of Chris deciding to go anywhere else in the room but to them. Free will could have changed everything. But the tendencies were in the stars. These lessons were coming for them one way or the other. It's just how they wanted to learn them. We have to start appreciating that the energy of what's around us sets the condition with how we react. Will, it's not a good look. Jada, happy healing. Chris, you're so goddamn funny. But none of that is justifying it, that particular action. We can only hope that we can have them heal. Will, Jada, go behind closed doors, work this shit out. Chris, take a look around the room and say, if you're going to be my bro, hey, listen, I'm going to make fun of you here. It's funny, but if you don't think it, I'll, skip, I'll ditch it. Chris learned respect. By the way, Will was the pers perfect person to show that. So take this as a microcosm and figure out where the lessons are. Because when my son was bullied, I was able to tell him punching that kid out isn't the answer. Now, would I back him up? Yes. But I also told him that the first thing I'm going to say to you is, there's got to be a better way than what you just did. You didn't have to punch him. Did you talk to him? Did you go through the steps? Were you in imminent danger? It's time for all of us to start doing better, including the spectators. Quit judging. Your energy sucks. Send them light. Be the compassionate people that you post about all the time and start living up to your words and have compassion for what Jada and Will are going through and what Chris is going through. All right, guys, thanks again for hearing me out. More things coming down the pathway here. We're going to give each other the hard tap to tell one another we care and love for one another and to remind each other to simply keep going. To this right here. Thank you for hearing me on that. I, I just, I feel for them. I can feel Jada. I can feel Will. I can feel Chris. Right? I'm just going to keep on I keep moving my screen until I, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Oh, good Lord. So, back to this chart. Let's take a look at the North Nodes here. Now, the North Nodes are about our karmatic venture. The things that were meant to get done in this life. You've got Aquarius in the third house. Hey, Chris, are you an Aries? Yeah, I sure am. Third house is about communication. That was her opportunity to not act like a pissy bitch about it. That's what that is. So karmatically, his communication of that, it was how she took it. Communication is what you say, how you say it, how you do it, how you act about it. It's also about how you react to the information that you get. Guess what, Jada? This look right here? His side eye? Not so cool. Hey, Will, what's going on with your north node? Oh, it's Aries. Hey, Chris, you have any Aries up there? I sure do in my moon and my horizon. You see how they're all connected now? It's like a Merkaba. Right? So just to double down in this, then in, in Chris's north node, Gemini hitting his rising sign, what Will projects out there, Gemini in the third house is the communication. Should Chris have said it? Probably not. I mean, we all get that he has, you know, creative insight here. He's got creative latitude. But should he have said that knowing that it might hurt? He doesn't know the breadth of that. But he was a perfect catalyst because guess what? Gemini rising. Welcome to Earth. There it is, guys. It's right there. It's right in front of you. 100%. Now, let's take a look at 
Lilith. We're just going to spend a minute or two on Lilith here. I'm going to bring this up a little more so we can kind of see it. So Lilith is in Libra. Ha <laughs> ha, hi Will. She's looking at him to kind of get through this dark night of the soul. That is part of the reason why it blew up the way it did. Gemini and Lilith. Well, he's got to do some self-healing in all of this, right? And again, I'm kind of turning the mirror on him, but just take it at face value. By the way, Gemini and Lilith have a tendency of escaping reality on a regular basis. Will Smith has a lot of escapism here. He's got Scorpio Moon. He's got Gemini Rising. Um, he's got, you know, Gemini and Lilith. And Libras, although can get back to practical, they definitely like to see how the world works, right? And then Capricorn, this other Earth sign in, into uh, Chris here in the Lilith, talks about kind of a, you know, kind of like a, why don't you like me? I don't really care. He kind of doesn't give a shit, which makes him an incredibly good comedian. You know, combined with the idea that he's an Aries rising and an Aries Virgo, hey, just, well, bah. But he's Aquarian in the way that he speaks. He doesn't want to hurt people. And when he does, he does it with the truth. By the way, just to go back to pick on, you know, Jada with the whole G.I. Jane thing. G.I. Jane, calling her G.I. Jane is kind of freaking badass, guys. Again, I'm not justifying the joke. But when you really analyze it, don't you think that her being called G.I. Jane, a strong, independent woman... And if you watched her show, and I finally just watched clips of this because it's not marketed to middle-aged white men. Let's just say it that way. She takes up a lot of angst. She's working her shit out in public for a long time. You know, the feeling of inadequacies, the feeling of, of needing to get to equality, the needing to get to whatever. And listen, Will treats her like an equal. It's in, it's in their chart. The Libra to Libra, they, he, they're partners. They are, they are copacetic right there. But here comes Chris, who kind of doesn't care what you think of him. He really does. Do you think Chris Rock, aside from the, aside from the Tommy Boy moment where he's like, it doesn't hurt here and it doesn't hurt here, but right about here. And he woke up to that. Don't you think that aside from that bruise, he doesn't give a rat's ass? His tour is called Ego Death. Pay attention, Will. Pay attention, Jada. Jada, for you to be upset for him to take a crack at that, that was actually a hidden compliment. Again, poor timing. And for you to be upset with that, check your ego. Oh, and Will? You sitting there going, ah, I'm just going to be strong man right here. I'm going to be here for my girl. You took more knocks here, Will, than Chris got bumped up. I'm telling you. It's just how Hollywood works, isn't it? We're going to get to the 10th. Actually, let's talk about the 10th house. So here we go again. 10th house Virgo. Jada is all about herself. Remember what I talked about how Jada with the 10th house and the Pluto stuff going on with Will and her dreams and her, uh, you know, the Uranus placement Jada knows exactly what she's doing. I'm sorry, guys. And I'm not saying it's nefarious. She can be smart and, and gain here. And oh, by the way, when you break it down, because we're going to go back up to Chiron here in a second. That's where we'll wrap up. When you look at how the angle is there, right? It ends up being a four. So Virgo, her 10th house in Virgo, she needs a foundation. There's something about foundation. She's got to get coupled here, right? Her and Jada needed each other. Let's just understand that. Now, Aquarian, uh, hello, 10th house Aquarian. What's good for everybody? Let's get there, age of Aquarius, right? By the way, that's also a five angle. So both your approach in Virgo for Jada and your approach for Will, they both have the same idea to help change other people, right? 
should probably take a quick look at their uh, the, at their numbers too. Give me a second on that. And then the Capricorn shows up again in the tenth house for Chris. Listen, this guy's a hard worker, man. He also relies on connecting the dots with other people. Do you know why? He's an Aquarian. He doesn't need other people, but he works well with other people. Chris Rock was not the problem in the room, everybody. Chris Rock was not the problem in the room, and I'm not being sympathetic to this. Now, let's take a look at Chiron. Chiron is an asteroid believed to have possibly been a planet that got blown apart by the Kuiper Belt. Go read your astronomy books. Now, Aries for Jada in the fourth house. That means that in this life, her healing is going to have to come from her home. Will, sitting there in Aries, in Chiron, at his birth chart, in the 11th house. By the way, the 11th house is Aquarian. This says that Will Smith has trouble getting along with people sometimes. Where Chris wants to get ahead and Will wants to get ahead, Will's going to run faster than Chris. Right? This is like a competitive thing. He's got to he's got to get over this that he doesn't have to be number 1 amongst his friends. Right? With Jada being in the 4th house, you know what she has to get over? She has to get over understanding that her home's not broken. That she can find worthiness in it. She doesn't have to be angry anymore. By the way, her 1219 is a 4. By the way, Aries for Will, his angle, 59, is a 5. Do you see some trends here? They're about changing things up. So in that position, that tells me that Will could uplift anybody, could change anybody's life, right? Certainly from a career standpoint. And then Chris, Chris is just hysterical to me. Like he's funny, his chart is even funny. Because he's a Pisces in the 12th house. He was really up against it, right? Going from the Chiron in, in uh, Pisces moving into Aries. By the way, Chris is older than Will. Who's older than Jada? And you can tell by the, by the progressions of this. So Pisces sitting here in, in Chiron, his Chiron and Pisces, Chris is going to be about the healing energy of saying, you know, I don't always get along and either it goes really, really well or I become a terrible friend. And I learned that lesson from it. He just learned that lesson. So Chris, you were built to deliver that. And at the time of the start of the show, Chiron was in Aries in the sixth house. And this is the part that I really want to get poignant about. The energy of the earth right now has Chiron energy in Aries in the sixth house. The sixth house is about your health. That includes your physical health. That includes your mental health. It has been proposed that maybe Will Smith has been a little bit challenged when it comes to his mental health. I'm going to tell you the stars are prime for that. 100%. Jada already in Aries. And by the way, what a gift. That's why the two of them have had struggles for the past seven years. Because Aries has been in Chiron. Chiron has been in Aries. You guys got what I was saying. And to understand that this is kind of a cyclical nature for you to break free and for you to be able to move about the cabin and all that other good stuff, there's a lot of healing going on between the two of them. And right now, say this as somebody else who's been born under an Aries, this is 100% the dynamic that you need to grow. Will Smith has an opportunity to grow. Jada Smith has an opportunity. Get off your effing high horse, right? Her north node was in opposition with Mercury. Guys, that's really significant to us, to us folk. Right? And that your Mars is in conjunct with your North Node. Jupiter was in opposition for with her 10th house. Her career was in danger. Something new is going to come of this, though, guys. 
Something new is absolutely going to come of this, right? Now you take a look at what, and again, I, I know you'd love for me to show this. It's going to take too much time. His son was in conjunction with this North Node. He was destined to have something happen here. Mercury was in opposition with the sun. His actions weren't going to be aligned with someone in balance. He was very imbalanced. Will Smith came into Sunday, March 27th, very imbalanced. Right? Because his Jupiter was in opposition with what he came into. His power base in Pluto was in opposition with Jupiter. His Saturn was square with, with his moon. His structure was upside down. It's also lending itself for prime conversations with, say, a wife that would say, listen, baby, you can't go off with nobody no more. I want you here. I need this. Okay. Pluto is also square with Mercury, which tells me he was ready to give away his power. A hundred percent. His Lilith was trying with Venus, which means that he was being pulled into that relationship in a way that he hadn't been before. She challenges him, guys. She kind of owns him. But sometimes that's a good thing. I look at Chris, his Mercury was sextile to Venus. Jupiter squared in his north node. Something big shit was going to happen. Either everybody was going to say, you know who should run this? I think we should get Chris to do it. I think it'd be awesome. Or... A prolific star is going to come up and punch you on stage. Saturn conjunct with Sun. Ultimately, I think this will be a good thing for him. But Uranus, the planet of, rebel the planet of rebellion, was trying to his 10th house. Now, what that means is, is that something was going to happen that was very indicating that something was going to change within his career. The amount of bulked energy that Chris Rock just banked is insane. Because people are going to come see his shows just to say, if I hear one more welcome to Earth joke, I'm out of here. Just to get a laugh. But more importantly, the most, the most important aspect from what Chris Rock went through on March 27th, 2022 in the stars was that Jupiter was squared with his north node. The expansion of who he was supposed to be was firm into this north node. Chris Rock deserved respect after that. And people may think Jada needed respect there. And she did. I understand it. There's no right or wrong here. Cut it out. Quit being absolute. None of this is absolute. They're all at fault. And they're all the perfect players for one another's discovery. We've got to start looking at astrology. Not necessarily as something where we can predict. Oh, gosh. So, one of the things i got to get better at is making sure that my OBS system has all the microphones linked up to it in each one of the scenes. Here I am thinking I'm being savvy. And I totally, like, miss the boat on this. So if you're still watching this, kudos. The, the, the lips aren't matching the words here, right? So I think what I was actually talking about is something else that I cut in the film. But I think it's just kind of funny to do a voiceover on this. I'm much more comfortable, actually, in my screw-ups than I am in my planned uh, delivery. But this is the part I want to mention. Um... Astrology, we have to evolve. We have to use it differently, right? I think we also have to recognize that, you know, the way that we work on things and the way that who we are, like, you know, cut out the judgment stuff. I know I said it a couple of times, but it's real, right? I also have been through like 15 OBS tutorials and I knew better. And I'm totally doing the double hand class together. Yeah. I'm talking about free will here, by the way. And how great is it that it's Will Smith and it's free will? It's pretty spectacular. Listen, I'll tell you what. If you email me at brandon at spiritreeconnections.com and say in the subject line, um, 
that you watch to the end. You watch the video to the end. Uh, I'm going to give you mad kudos, and I will absolutely, if it's certainly if it's past the date, I'll make sure you get in at the discounted rate for the astrology class. I think if you're that into this and you paid attention this long, you should get something. So, all right, guys, this is a part where I sit back and relax. I put my hands together. I think I was actually talking about the nun thing. I don't know where it is. I'm all over the place for crying out loud. Oh, yeah, I told the story. It's clearly not supposed to be public yet, but I'll save it for another day. Just a shade under an hour, everybody. Shade under an hour. Let's do the hard tap so you can tell each other we love and care for one another and remind one another on our path to simply keep going. All right, guys. Thanks again. Get your discount.